the feisty little D-Max. Just Drive. going places. Big trucks for you to tread. That's it. The D-Max line. Here ya. Go the D-Max. Here you go, folks. Look, we've taken this D-Max here right up into the Cape region. We've done the tough tracks of Glass House and Coffs Harbour. We've even taken it up into the high country, into the snow. We've just finished filming three weeks of some of the realistically toughest tracks in Tasmania. Now, the rig doesn't have the big 35s and the lockers of some of the other trucks that you've seen on a four-wheel drive action episode, but the old girl gets me everywhere I want to go with a little bit of gumption and persuasion and, of course, using a winch every once in a while. Now, you've all asked for it in the past and we've finally taken a break from filming here in Tasmania to show you all a roots and all detailed walk around look at how we've set up the D-Max to not only be a perfect touring vehicle, but how we've been able to tackle some of the toughest tracks in Australia and film four wheel drive action with it. So I reckon we get stuck into it with the latest modification we've made and probably the one that's changed the game enough for me to say, it's the best thing we've done on the D-Max since we've had it. Come this way. <laughs> I had to start down the back here because this is something I've been looking forward to for ages. You see, I met Tim from Mitz Alloy at a four-wheel drive show. He said, mate, can I show you my canopies? I said, yes, please. He showed me around the canopy that he had on his truck and I thought, gotta have one. I have to have one on the D-Max. Now, we've just currently filmed um, up in the Glasshouse Mountains and I ran out of talent and I actually drove the old canopy into a tree root and smashed it. On that line, go, 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 go. That's your window, man. Far out, he's due for a new canopy anyway. Is it all right, will it pop out? It'll probably polish out, mate, you'll be right. Okay. <laughs> Had to get a new one. Fortunately, Tim was on the show. Everyone probably thinks we set that up, we didn't. I legitimately run out of talent. I'm babbling. Tim has put this canopy on for me and I absolutely bloody love it. Let me start. Here I've got a water tank. Water, I can wash my hands, it's fantastic. We fill up from there. I've got a solar input ready to go here and all my electrics come in nice and neatly to the back here. Let me open this up. Open this up. Now up here, I've got lights. You probably won't see that during the day but I've got lights all through the canopy. That is, I can't tell you how luxurious that is. Over here of course, I won't take it out, you know what they are. Fridge, drop down slide, so handy. Over here, I got a little table, make me coffee in the morning, make a sandwich. Big old drawer, this is mine. No one goes into that but me. Fantastic, isn't it? Close that up. Up here, I've got a shelf for bits and pieces. Really handy, I find, for carrying water, things like that. What I'm loving about it, I'll tell you about it now, the whole canopy is modular. What does that mean? It means if I want to take these drawers out and put them over here and put the fridge on the other side, all I've got to do, undo the bolts, swap them around, bolt them back in the holes on the other side. You can change the whole canopy without drilling one hole because Tim has thought about how he can set up a canopy so that you can use it as a tradesman during the week, go camping on the weekend. It honestly works a treat. Now, it's close. Oh, this is cool. The structural bar up here holds stubby holders. Little things, little things like that. Right, come with me, come with me. I want to show you around the back, but before I do, just come down here. These little dog boxes that Tim does at Mitz Alloy are all modular as well, so you don't have to put them on when you get all this done. You can put them on later. For me, oh my goodness, they're fantastic because what I'm using these for is to put all my dirty recovery gear in. Doesn't go in the back, keeps all this clean, and I don't care what happens down here. I'll hose that out later. By the way, these things, they're waterproof. I mean, come on, think about it. How can they be waterproof? Up here, Tim's put in a jerry can holder for me designed for water. I'm not going to use it for water because as I showed you, I've got water up the front. I'm going to use this to carry diesel when we do Kimberley this year. We've got the Cape this year, a couple of big trips. That's going to contain 20 litres of diesel. Now, check this out. This is cool. This is really cool. Because I keep my swag up on top, we'll talk about that in a minute. Tim saw me once before climb up onto the roof of the D-Max by you putting my foot on the windowsill and climbing onto the roof. He said, no, 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 you can't be doing that. Built me a ladder, comes with a canopy rounded steps so when you got your double pluggers on and you kick them off straight up here it doesn't hurt your feet bend that up get it out of the way how sick is that idea so simple just works spare tire can't tell you how much of a difference that makes from getting it out from under the vehicle and putting it on the back it just makes changing it so much easier what i also like is there's this big area here makes the tire sit on it it means it's not taking all the weight on the bolts on the back of here 
So if you're running 35s, even 37s, and of course the custom canopy will be for you and your tyre size, sits on top of there, makes it so much easier. I finally got a trundle tray. Look at the size of this thing. Tim actually built this, the cheeky bugger, so that I could sleep in it if I need to. Look at the size of it. This has been underwater three or four times on the $1,000 track. She's bone dry inside, nothing. I found that hammer, it's a cracker. Nothing has gotten wet inside there. I'm in love with that. I've got to be, again, I'm using it for dirty stuff. There's my shovel. I've got a barbecue plate in here, jumper leaves, all the dirty stuff, spare CVs. Let's close that up there. I'll just close it up so I don't forget. Come this way, come this way. Alrighty, this side of the canopy is what I'm calling the communal side of the canopy because it's kind of open for everyone to get into. So as you can imagine, the film crew, I've already got someone swagging here that's not mine. The film crew kind of use this side, Sean I kind of uses it, I use it for a bit of pieces. So what I've said to Tim is leave this big and open and empty just so we can use it for storage. You might have noticed we've got these lift off points right here. This tray, four bolts, canopy comes off, put the jacking points in here and I can lift this off in about 15 minutes and use it tray alone. I probably won't do that whilst filming, but you can imagine how you could have that off as a tradie or maybe you wanted to go and get a, a load of firewood on the weekend. You can take this off very, very quickly, store it in the shed and away you go because all the electrics, we'll get onto that, all the electrics are just Anderson plugs, they can be undone and you can use it. Now, one thing I really like is the electrical system that we've got done here. Now, when you order a canopy from Mitz, you can decide to have all of this done for you, like I have, or it just comes with, if you want, this backing plate here so you can do it all yourself. I didn't have time, of course, so I've got Tim to do all this for me now. What we've got up here is a fairly simple CTEC system. It works extremely well. I went with CTEC because it charges fast and safely they're great value for money and so bloody easy to install. One thing I've stolen from the old D-Max, before I get there of course, here's the master switch for my interior lights. Each of the lights have got their own switches on them so I can control them from either end. That's important, it's a small thing, but if I'm over there, I don't want to have to walk all the way around here to switch the lights on. So the master controls both, pretty cool. But one thing I really do like, Daz did it for me on the old canopy. I've still got my party lights, mate. How's that? So I can still do a little disco in the back of the canopy. I like that. Down here, I've got myself battery, Look, she's pretty simple at the moment. I reckon over the next few months, I'll start to modify this and make it my own. But for now, Grassroots Canopy, it is blowing my mind just how much better this has made touring. Alrighty, let's talk about suspension briefly. Look, I've stuck with Fulcrum suspension. I've had them on numerous D-Maxes now. Brilliant value for money, haven't let me down. So I've stuck with them all around. I've been running the Formula Lift Kit from Fulcrum for ages now. I chose them because the shocks are designed and engineered in Brisbane by a team that know what we put four-wheel drives through. I've given this suspension hell and I haven't had to replace anything. The rear, however, we had to upgrade the springs. Now look, although this is an aluminium, extremely light canopy, it has added extra weight and of course what it has done is given me the ability to carry extra weight. So I took it to the boys, Fulcrum in Melbourne, they had a look at it, looked at what I was going to carry, looked at the extra weight, and they upgraded the springs for me in the back, and I reckon she sits beautifully. Plus, they're experts at matching the weight of your four-wheel drive to the right rated front and rear springs. Because I've got plenty of weight in the rear, I also run a Super Pro rear sway bar, which helps with body roll. A good upgrade for any tourer or tradie that carries heavy loads. Works an absolute treat. Now, I get asked all the time, do I run a locker in the D-Max? Yes, we do. We run a rear locker in the D-Max, a rear only. We don't run a front. The difference that makes, huge. On the really tough tracks, push the magic button, let her do a thing, and away she goes. Tire size, I'm running the uh, Bridgestone MTs, 265, 75, R16. We're gonna stick with 31s. It's a relatively stock vehicle, and I personally really enjoy showing you folks what can be done with a vehicle that you drive to work Monday to Friday and take bush Saturday, Sunday. So we're gonna stick with the 31s. All right, let's continue the tour. All right, let's get up here on top of the D-Max. Now on the canopy, this is kind of cool. We've got C-section already up here. So what that means is I am going to put a solar panel up here at some stage for the bigger trips, Kimberley Cape, things like that. So I can charge my battery and it's ready to go. That's what I was talking about with these Mitz Alloy canopies. All I gotta do is buy the, buy the solar panel, fit straight on. No need to worry about anything else. Now, Daz has done some cool little things up here that make such a big difference. Underneath my swag, he's made a little dish. The dish bolts onto my roof racks, and it means my swag can sit up here, it doesn't move around, it makes it so much easier 
to tie it on every morning. And right here, again, this is a Daz job for me, little custom thing. He's made this little bracket here for me to put my Max Tracks on. Now, yeah, it looks cool. It looks really cool. But it also means from here, it is so easy for me to get the Max Tracks off and use them. It's little things like this, sort of thinking outside the square, that make such a big difference to a touring truck like this. Woohoo! All right, welcome to my office. This is where I spend most of my days. It's fairly simple, but also very comfortable. I'll run you through what we've done. Outside, clear view, power fold mirrors, love them. Push this button down here, they fold in. Push that button again, they fold back out. Sounds simple, super cool. Especially on the tight tracks where the bigger cars having trouble getting through, push that button, ooh, slide through, make them look stupid. I like that. Now here, you can see I've got my winch controller. Most people have to run that out the window and down the front. If you get into a boggy puddle, you gotta get out and plug it in. That's Sean's job. But I've got mine hardwired in down here. I've got a unit end radio here. I love this one because it's all on the handset. I don't have to worry about a box that's hidden up underneath here, can't even see it. Awesome piece of kit. The only other thing I've got, of course, in a cab that makes a big difference, cotton candy air freshener because, well, life on the road can get a little bit smelly. Come out the front, I'll show you the bar work. Righto, up the front we've got an AFN bar, scrub bars down the side, and of course side steps down the bottom. Now, have a close look at those side steps, you'll see they are bent, they are scraped, they look, how's your father? Perfect. That's exactly how you want your side steps to look. It means the car itself, pristine. I never want to see side steps that are neat. It means you're not using your vehicle. Bang them up. Underneath, custom off-road bash plates that run the entire length down below. I reckon they have saved the vehicle in numerous numbers of times. I would not run without them. You must put bash plates on these vehicles. They're a little lower slung. They do rub their belly on the rocks. Put some bash plates, slide along, no problem at all. Of course, right here, I've been running a King's Dominator Extreme for some time now. I haven't changed it. People probably think you get a new one every trip. Nope. This one's been not only on this truck, but on several before it. Just keeps running. I owe myself and that winch quite a bit because it does pull us out of trouble occasionally. Look, as you can see, there's not much up here. We've got a light bar, of course, UHF aerial. The whole concept behind this four-wheel drive is to try and show you folks what can be done with a relatively stock dual cab ute. And I think you'll agree that with the mods we've made, you really can get just about anywhere in Australia and not only keep up with the bigger boys, but it doesn't stop you going on trips. I've got two questions for you before I get out of your hair. First and foremost, what do you reckon I should do to the old girl next? More electrics? More comfort? I don't know, what do you reckon? You folks own dual cab utes out there, what would you do next? Maybe what have you done? What are the mods you've done to your vehicle that you really love? And secondly, where do you want to see us take the D-Max next? We've got a huge year this year. I won't give away too many secrets, but some of the trips coming up, I am frothing on. I cannot wait to get going. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a look around. The D-Max as it sits right now, probably will change over the next few months, but for now, I love it. Takes me everywhere I want to go. Thanks very much for watching. Put your comments below, I'll have a look at them. I'll catch you out in the bush, eh?